We okay with tech? Hi, Andrew. Oh, they're beautiful. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. Excited. <laughs> Fantastic. We are now streaming live to Facebook. Yippee! We are. We nailed it. Yay! Hey, well done. You're a techno guy. He's pretty good. I, gonna, I might have I might have to have a stress a, a stress drink, Vivian. <laughs> I think you should. Well, it just looks like you're the captain of your private jet that you're flying that jet. So obviously. Yeah. Well, well, we were on crash and burn there for a second. So. <laughs> well, a lot of people are in already. So we got forty two people in here already. So. Now they will go on back on. So we're gonna give it. Um, we're gonna give it ten minutes if you don't mind. Just let everybody pack on. Yes. Um, I apologize for that. Let me see if James is in here yet. He is not, not yet, but. Um, I saw him before. Let me, yeah, yeah, I had this restarted, Andrew. Facebook yeah, I know. Was not, yeah, Facebook was not connecting for some reason. I know. So um, there he is. Hold on, let me promote him. There you go. When in doubt, reboot. Iva. Hi, Iva. Hi, Iva. <laughs> I think I, I think I hit the wrong person. Here comes James. There's Alba. Alba, you can Alba, stay in if you, you want. You all are incredible. This, this way you feel more important than Nikki, who's in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. There's James. For everybody waiting, we had a little technical difficulty just trying to get the... Uh, Facebook Live up and running. So we're just gonna wait about 10 minutes to let everybody get in here and get comfortable before we fire everything up. So invite all your friends in here for sure. Get everybody in here now. Everything is working and live. So again, if you're in the audience on Zoom, just um, we'll start in 10 minutes. And uh, great to see everybody in here. Tons of people in here. Hey, Oscar. Hey, James. What's up, buddy? Look at that t-shirt. I, I wore a special t-shirt tonight. Just in <laughs> Wait, me too. Me too. You see it? I got my America flag. <laughs> what's he say? That do do what, or do not. There is no try. Oh, there you go. I'm glad you did, Andrew, because after after 12 days of doing these, it has to be laundry day. I know. I changed, my, I changed my shirt. Wait a second. You said you had enough to go on for months. I, I, I do, but you know, I was worried with Vivian coming on. She's such a powerhouse. I didn't want to. I, I couldn't think of anything cute or funny because we're just. It's all about. It's all about respect. I'm going back to the classic hair salon uniform. <laughs> so what, about uh, 15 years ago, we did our first live stream, and in my studio, we have all this heavy duty, duty cabling and rigging, and it's all powered for like streaming and it was like the very first time so we were doing these live and still things would crash and be horrible and so one day being a multitasker that i am i decided just before we were going live to put on the washing machine uh because i just figured that would be a good thing i blew up everything in the entire studio and everyone's scrambling and they're trying to figure it out and then they realized it was me oh was it's so me. funny yeah yeah well it wasn't funny at the time <laughs> hey, Vivian, you were doing this long before anyone was doing this. Yeah, was... yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> hey, a lot of people now, are... Think of the equipment differences now. Oh, yeah, and I still have all these huge cables here. I mean, they're really thick cables. And I remember we, we at one event, we had 13,000 people show up, and they said to me that for a live stream, that was more than the professional football association attracted and it was like oh how, how did that happen <laughs> yeah it was strange it was it was crazy time i could write a book on all the things that have gone wrong technically 
And th this is the first night we've had faith since we've upgraded. This is the first night we've had Facebook give us any trouble, but I imagine Facebook is just out of control with the Facebook lives right now. Yeah, and they're also going to a different platform, aren't they? You have an option now to go to the upgraded one. Is that where you went yeah. to? I, I went to Zoom, that's it. I don't know what Zoom pays for, and that's on them, right? Because uh, you can select. Them. You can select their new yeah. version on Facebook or the original one. I think we're on the new one if I'm not mistaken. And I think that's more buggy. Yeah, it is, it is. The new one, it's bound to be. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think the, I think Facebook is having problems because poor Iva and Nikki Lee have been answering so many questions about PPP loans and all the other crazy stuff that they're, they're crashing the, the entire internet. Yeah, well, it's too, it's too bad the um, uh, unemployment and the PPP loan places can't get their damn acts together. You fill this stuff out and who knows when we're going to hear from them, right? Yeah. Yeah, I heard a story this morning, just incredible. <clears throat> so a number comes up on one of my client's cell phones, right? And it's an unknown number. And I don't know why she decides to pick it up, but it's un the unemployment. And he, the guy goes through a whole rigmarole and... Um, he said, do you mind, would you send me your information? She goes, wait a second, I don't know you. You're saying something. He said, well, we all have these, we were all given these special phones. <laughs> Very and interesting. If, if, uh, her people weren't getting the unemployment because they checked, they hadn't been looking for jobs, right? Yeah. Are you looking for a job and you're supposed to check Yes. Yeah but, yeah, but why would you if you're going back to work at your own salon, right? It makes no sense. Yeah, but like they, they don't they know really, that. Yeah, No, I know, but I'm just saying they need to get But it makes no sense out. that the, you know, anyway. So they suspended that one. Yeah. Hey, Nikki. Hey, Heather. Christine's in here. Everybody's in here. Holy smokes. Steve Stratlin. Mary's in here. Cool. Where's Philip Hyde and Mary? Good deal. So we are going, we are at 8.09. We will start at 8, uh, let's say 8.15. This way uh, we have a full house. And they are coming in. All right, that's good. Say, that's just, every, Vivian, everybody is here to watch it. My oh. friend Nicholas Wrench is in here. Everybody's in here. Oh, I love Nicholas. So guess what I'm going to do next Monday? Um, I, when I when I first started hairdressing, I was a generalist at college. And then when I went to Vidal Sassoon's, they said to me, and I became a stylist there, um, they said, to, no, I was a junior. They said, well, pick which department you want to be in. And at that time, uh, in Bond Street in London, there were three floors. There were 70 people employed. And so I walked around the cutting area and I thought, oh, this is fun, it's exciting. And then I went upstairs to the color department and the color department on that particular day was quiet and it was very sort of somber. And they said, pick the floor you want to work on. Nothing about aptitudes, nothing about, you know, where is your natural talent? Are you more of a hair color dimension or are you more of a scientist and you need to be in the color world? So I thought, well, it seems more fun in the hair cutting section. So I just ended up being a hair cutter. Then they gave me Annie Humphreys as my colorist to work with, the queen of color. And so I just thought, this is normal. You know, I just cut hair and, and Annie makes my haircuts look magnificent when they're really not that magnificent. So years pass by and I just recognize that I'm a hair cutter, I'm not a colorist. So when the boom and the change of, uh, in our business happened with all of the color, I kept saying, you know, it's time for Viv to become a colorist. And I do color my own collections because I know exactly what I want with my collections, but I have no idea how to formulate color. I just know what I want as an end result. So I will say, I want it to look like a red setter. And I used to say this to Annie, all right, love. And she'd go, I'll make it like a red setter. Or I want it to look like snow that just landed on grass and it's only just landed, so it's tipped. 
I'm like, I love I can do it. So there was never any mention of a number whatsoever. So that, that was good because I don't, I'm not good at that stuff. So years passed by and I think, right, Viv's going to become a baby colorist. And I've been thinking, I should just learn how to color hair, like properly, instead of like doing this crazy stuff that I do. So I made a call to Beth Renardi and I said, Beth, do you want to come on a hair designer TV live and teach me how to color hair? So I have my first lesson this Monday in front of an audience when I have no idea what I'm doing. That's fun though. That's Beth great. is great fun. That should be hysterical. Yeah, it's, it is hysterical because I get bored. So I just sort of like, I, I've done a few things and I get like halfway through and I say, can we take a shortcut right now? Do I have to keep going like this? This is really boring, right? Or can't we just dip her, stick her head in the bucket and just like mush her around and then bring her back again? Because all this tiny sectioning is so tedious. So yeah, so that's what I'm doing. So my new title is Viv the Baby Colorist. That's cool. Well, Viv, it's, it's kind of amazing that you had Annie. Annie's like the genie, you know? I want to do this, boom, your wish is my command. Yeah, she did everything, amazing. I was so blessed, but I didn't know any different. That's the tragedy of it. <laughs> Very fun. Um, okay, two minutes and we're gonna get started. Everybody uh, invite your friends. Let's get this thing pumped up. Let's get, let's get the volume going. Whole bunch of people on Facebook. Very nice. No, no pressure, Vivian. <laughs> Everybody, make sure you give a shout out to Vivian if you're in here. Max said to say hello, Vivian. Oh, hi, Max. Yes, lots of love for you, Vivian. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, love back. Song. Oh, that's a lot of hearts. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you see that comment? Yeah, exactly. Somebody blew up the screen. <laughs> oh, Max. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. You got a lot of fans here, Viv. Oh, that's so lovely. Well, very much appreciate it. Okay, one minute and we're going live. Yeah, a lot of the Facebook comments, they keep saying where they saw you at the bazillion events that you've done in your past. I know, gosh, what a hair history I've had. Hey, Vivian, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, yes. Okay, awesome, I'm just gonna mute the panelists for now and except for myself and you. Okay, welcome everybody to tonight's Beauty Business Reset class. We have the honor of having Vivian McKinder on tonight. Um, great pleasure, Vivian. I, I don't really know you that well. I, I hope we get to know e each other a whole lot better. Um, obviously, I know who you are and your name. I, I hope everybody in here, unless they've been living under a rock, uh, has to know your name. <laughs> so with that, I would love to get tonight's lesson started and I will kick it off to you, Vivian. Thank you so much, Derek. And thank you, James, for being here and your support. I greatly appreciate it. And you do win the, you do win the prize for the best backdrop. Very stunning. And Andrew, thank you for inviting me. Uh, so thank you so much. And thank you for all of you giving up uh, your evening. And I, I hope that uh, my message adds tremendous value to you as we go on this journey. So I'm gonna actually go to my screen share and uh, start off with, um, my screen, let's go there. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we're good to go. We can see the screen. You're good to go. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so I'm gonna start off by just showing you a little two minute video, which is a summation of my career. And I was asked to do this, it was quite funny. Someone said, well, Viv, we need just two minutes of your career. And I thought, how do you jam 45 years of your career into two minutes? And then I thought, what has been important in my life all the way through my career? And, and what do I want as a message to, to convey that withstands the passage of time? 
And I thought deep and hard about what motivates me every single day. And when you've been around as long as I've been around, it, people do say, you know, what motivates you? What keeps you going? And I would say, I have a hunger for wisdom. I have a hunger for creativity. And I love to do everything in love. And I feel that those three qualities are really important. So I hope as I show you this very short video, you get that sense of uh, where my core values lie. And I hope it's a little inspiration to you. People often ask me how I've stayed motivated and inspired 40 years later. I think this quote really says it all. Energy and persistence conquers all things. Transformation. I never tire of creating beauty. Love of beauty is taste. The creation of beauty is art. What motivates me is my passion for beauty and longing to learn and grow. With each new collection, I try something new. It's so important to challenge oneself. I do believe we're only as good as the last hairstyle we created. Today we need to stand out from the crowd and grab people's attention. Never before has it been so important to stand out and yet fit in. My designs are not just about a cut or color. It's about a style that captures the personality and lifestyle of my clients. When you get the right look on the right person, it's magic. Today's new platform for learning is online, combined with practical training. When I created Hair Designer TV 15 years ago, I knew it was the future. I am a product of Hair Designer TV. It's made me a better designer. And now I see salons and stylists around the world being transformed. And this is the best prize of all. We are all growing together. How cool to transform lives. And that has been the best makeover of all. So when I think about the time we're in right now, the image that I have in my mind is that we are in a gym working out in preparation for playing the game of our life when we return to business as normal. As we know, there are some people who are thriving in this quiet time because they are reinventing themselves, they have done spring cleaning, they are studying online, and they are re-evaluating a lot of things. For some people, they've just turned into couch potatoes and other people are in stress. Everyone's having a different way of responding to this time. And what I do know is that when we do go back to our new normal, uh, what we're going to be facing are people who are quite fragile. They've been shaken up, they've been stirred, and they're wondering what their life is all about. And I think we've all been through it. We've all been through the highs and the lows. So I think now, more than ever before, our consultation, our connection, our ability to read who really is sitting in our chair is even more important. I think we're going to have people coming back to us yearning for a makeover. They've seen their hair growing out. They value their color more than ever before. 
they are, their hair is unkempt and they're realizing how important we are as hairdressers. I really believe that we are going to be valued more than we have been because when something's taken away from you and you sometimes take it for granted, we all know we start to appreciate it so much more when we get it back in our lives. So having said that, this I feel is a really important time to, as we say here, reset and look at what we do well, but how can we do it even better? And I wanna take you on a journey tonight and on Thursday on this journey on the quest to reinvent yourself first, reinvent your consultation and how you make a choice every single day on the hairstyle that you do or do not do. And I wanted to start with you. So we're gonna go on this amazing journey. I also believe there are gonna be people that just won't come back to hairdressing. They'll decide, you know what, it's not for me. And maybe that's good. I also think there are gonna be people out there that are gonna say, I wanna reinvent my life and I wanna become a hairdresser. So I think it's all about us setting a high standard and it's marvelous to have been part of this wonderful event, uh, Beauty Biz Reset, to see all the incredible teachers, speakers, coaches that you've had on here. So thank you, Derek, and thank you, Andrew, for making this possible for us all because every single person says something to lift us up and that is so vital. So I'm now going to take you on a journey. I'm gonna go back to my screen. And one of the things that I think is quite funny, and, and I, I have a very kind of crazy sense of humor, but I wonder it, how you relate to this. quite funny those who can't wait to leave on a Saturday and those who drag themselves back to work um, I have been very fortunate in my career I've worked with extraordinary brilliant people I've worked for the best of the best and so I've been around such inspiration and excitement and that was a choice to work for the best of the best and within that came a price so what I want to share with you tonight are these important points and I first of all want you to ask yourself why all those years ago, did you become a hairdresser? Why? Was it for the creativity? Was it for the fun of what this industry represents? Was it freedom? Was it for your love of, of transforming people? Was it your love of helping and serving? What was your why? And how far away from your why have you gone? How far away has business pulled you in a different direction? Tonight, I want to revisit your why. Why did you become a hairdresser? I first of all want to explore building your brand and the clients that you want. I then want to go into the law of attraction, luck versus design. We're then going to explore the three laws of compensation and then four emotional drivers that determine your destiny. And when we meet again on Thursday, these four points lead us to the fifth, what a five-star consultation is and how to develop an extraordinary sense of style. When I used to watch Trevor Sorby and the most amazing hairdressers at Fidel Sassoon's and people I've seen in the editorial world work, one of the things I found so fascinating was watching them look at the guest sitting in their chair or the model sitting in their chair and watch how they thought, watch how they played with the hair, watch how they decided on a hairstyle. And from seeing hairstyles being created for the very first time, seeing the very first coloring techniques by Annie Humphreys, the first, first time I saw an ombre and a balayage and shoe shine and, and slices and, and all the different things that we did 30 plus years ago, and how they came up with those ideas and the excitement and the thrill of being creative. 
I used to think, well, you know, that guy over there, he gets all the core clients because he's just lucky. I don't get the core clients because I'm this redhead and I look like a nerd. So therefore, I'm never going to get core clients. And then years passed by and I realized, no, 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 I'm responsible for who I attract. And today, more than ever before, we have this incredible ability to brand ourselves in a very unique, amazing way. So a journalist asked me, and he said, Pip, what's your brand? And this is like 20 years ago. And I looked at him in total mystery. It's like, what do you mean, my brand? What's that? I didn't even know what a brand was. I thought a brand was like, oh, a brand of baked beans. I thought that's what a brand was. It was a brand of food. I didn't understand branding of hair. And I said to him, well, I suppose I just like to make people look pretty. And he said, no, that's not a brand. And I said, well, then I have no idea what a brand is. And he said to me, your style is classic with an edge, but you never compromise beauty. And I thought, huh, I didn't even know that. When I realized that I do like an edge, I do love classic, but I must never compromise beauty. When I understand that that was my mantra, I could put intention behind it and I could then go out and seek it because, because I had a greater awareness of it. And as you know, what you focus on expands. So once I understood that simple thing from that journalist, I started to expand in a totally different way. My question to you tonight, and I would love for you to start writing in the little chat, how would you define your brand as an artist, as a stylist? What is your brand? And I'd also like to know how many of you would like to reinvent your brand because now is the perfect time to do that. So when I look at my brand and I look at how I show myself across my different platforms, um, what is my message? Who is my audience? What am I trying to convey? And whatever I build, can I sustain it? Because sometimes we can go down this sort of one trick pony path and it runs out of steam. And it's like, well, now where do I go? So I think it's so important when you brand yourself that you know that you can sustain it and you can have so much joy on your journey as you go along. I was working with a really amazing marketing company and they said to me, well, who's your client, Vivian? And I went, hairdressers. Well, that, that's not enough information. Who is your brand? Who do you want to attract? And I thought, I, I don't know. People that like to learn, I suppose. And again, I was so very vague. When you look at this here, do you feel you're most comfortable when you're relaxed and casual? Do you feel you're most comfortable when you're sophisticated, hippie, retro, edgy? If you were to define who you are right now, could you please write that down? What is your ideal style? Because what I want to explore tonight is your authentic self. Not what somebody else is telling you to be, not following what some Instagram person is saying. What is your authentic self? How do you best show up in this world so that when you stand and you look at a woman in your chair, you are 100% authentic? I'd like to know what that is. The law of attraction says that what you project, you will um, attract. So if you think about your business, your interior, and you walk through your space, and if you could put a magazine title to it, what is that? If you think about how your staff show up for work, what is their branding? Now is the most amazing time to do some team building around this because now is a great time to edit our closets, throw away things that don't work, and completely give ourselves a totally new look. I really feel that if we can reinvent ourselves now with our own sense of style, when we go back, it's like, wow, here we are. We've had time off, but we're reinventing ourselves. And that journey, of course, is, is a team experience. So again, I'm gonna be asking you, what are you putting out there and what are you expecting to come back? So our home play that I would like for you to explore I really would like for you to identify what your brand is when you go back. What is your signature style? What are the looks that you're so famous for? And what is it that you do better than anybody else? 
I'd love for you as a team to start creating your ideal mood board. So reach out to your team and start looking at some great ideas as we go into our summer season and what is that going to look like? Now is a time to take a real hard look at your Instagram feed and evaluate, does it demonstrate skill? Is there an incredible sense of style? And the level of professionalism, how high is that? And how can you raise that lid for it to be even higher? These are very important things to really understand because we've all been in a place where someone sat in our chair and she was not our type of client. She somehow fell into our lap. She wants something that we don't relate to. She's not listening to any advice and you're doing what she wants to do and you're not enjoying the journey. We've all had that experience. And we've all had the experience where we attract someone who's a visionary. We attract someone who appreciates our creativity. We attract someone who values our service and we feel like we have more energy and zest to our work and we're excited. I never look at anybody as a time or the next one or the next one. I always look at them as an individual because my consultation does that. It's not another trim, it's not an assembly line. It's always, I meet you where you live and I design from the inside to the outside. So the first home play is brand and style. So let's go to our audience for a moment and I'm gonna stop sharing. And let's find out how we, uh, some feedback from everybody. So Vivian, the first question I had was, um, how do you define, or what do you mean by professionalism exactly? I, I mean, that, that's a no brainer, but go ahead. Um, I think that um, the way that you use graphics, the way you use your text to describe uh, your language, that the images are well photographed, there isn't clutter and chaos in the background. Like even though I have these images behind me, I would never take a photograph in this space because it's visual pollution and I want to sell the hair. And so therefore every aspect from the way it's photographed, the angle of the face, I would rather see absolute quality versus quantity. The variety, is it just the backs of heads, which is nice to see, but I, I don't walk backwards into a room. I wanna know, does this hairdresser know how to design to a face shape? Does this hairdresser know how to design to age? Does this hairdresser know how to design to fashion versus just backs of heads? So it's all aspects of looking at it. Now is a really good time to start studying photography. Now is a really good time to really take your Instagram feed to that next level and, and, and notch it up so that people have that understanding. Wow, these guys know what they're talking about. People are asking, do you do your own videos? And they're so stellar. Obviously, um, yes. Yes, I do. I do. I, I learned how to edit and I learned how to edit by default. I had two full-time editors that cost me a fortune. And when I had to make cuts in my business um, and I had to make such major changes, um, I thought, right, I'm, I've sat by these editors side and I said, cut this, do this. I'm going to learn how to edit my own stuff. So I now edit. Yes. So, so far I would say that based on what everybody's saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. You Absolutely. nailed it. Absolutely. So this is a really good exercise for, you know, okay, our businesses are closed right now. I know that we have to have social distancing, but is there a way to go in, in your, following the guidelines of the government where a couple of you could go in, in space and in distance and look at your space and think, you know what, maybe we should paint that wall. We've got the time now to do it. Maybe we should get some new artwork for our walls. We've got the time now to do it. What can you do in subtle things within your space to give it that little facelift and increase the value of your brand and give that sort of sense of wow. And I tell you what, you said pictures worth a thousand words, beautiful hair imagery on the wall that's relevant and current is powerful. And when you go into a space and you do not see current beautiful work, it makes you question. And I like to see that in my space. So a lot of people are saying, you know, what we have here, I hardly ever post because I'm not happy with my photos. And another one that said, basically, I need to get on social media and start pumping up the game. And obviously both of those are yes, yes, and fix it. Yeah, you know, 
Me too. I'm, I'm not comfortable learning new levels of, um, of technology because it's very daunting. But once you do dive in and you watch enough videos um, and you have support, you're then empowered. Like we just uh, this week have created Hairdressers Create and we're creating our first Facebook group uh, with Vivian McKinder. And I'm learning all about this and I'm having to watch videos on it and so on and so forth. And it launches at the end of this week. But again, it's a, a new thing for me. So when we look at this brand here, I've got you know a very high fashion image. It's very clean, it's very modern. I've got very beautiful graphics, it's well laid out. So I'm saying this is the level of professionalism we should strive for because everyone has a client that's coming to the salon who is who's a graphic designer. And you know all you need to do is post uh, in your bathroom that you're looking for a great photographer, you're looking for a great graphic designer and do you know exchange of services, be creative around that and build your team so that you can have quality things. I don't do my graphic designs. I have amazing Candace who does that for me. So she knows how to make my image pop out and sing and she knows how to play with the colors. So what is your color theme? Think about that. So now is a very important time to start branding yourself in a way that you probably haven't done before, because I'm talking about everything being so well coordinated. So there's one strong message from the hair to the fashion, every single aspect of it is fully understood. The next one that we have here is the law of attraction. And, and this to me is quite funny, actually. Your influences will determine your success. So there is obviously copycatting with intention and purpose. I've been around iconic hairdressers and by default, their brilliance has rubbed off on me to some measure. I've also been around people who weren't a good influence and some of that rubbed off on me in the wrong way. And sometimes you don't realize what's rubbing off until sometimes it's too late. So people do what people see. So unconscious copycatting, we all have blind spots. That's why we need support in life. So for example, if you have a stylist who is outstanding at consultation, but she's with somebody that does not do good consultations, the person who is weak is either going to get inspired and improve, or this person who's strong is going to come down to the level of the person next to. The strongest one will always win. But when you have no intention around this and how you pair people together and how you move people around your space so that your positive influences, you want to always be mindful of actually intentional copycatting versus unconscious copycatting. And I think this is so funny that they are literally mimicking each other's behavior, which is hysterical. Now, when these ladies went to the salon, the biggest question here is, did they ask for a hairstyle like their dog? It's an interesting question, isn't it? Because they look very much like each other. The law of attraction is so, so powerful. And for anyone here that has an Afghan, I, they're great dogs. But a question is, do you look like your dog? That's an interesting question, isn't it? I have a horse, so I start to worry if I'm gonna start looking like my horse. But anyway, when we look at the law of attraction, you know, this is kind of cute, isn't it? And the question is, does it go too far? So I I'm laughing at these images thinking about how the law of attraction is so powerful, how like attract like. And then I thought, hold on, Viv, you used to have a ginger King Charles Spaniel dog. Could you possibly have looked like him? And the answer is, of course, a big yes. So you can see that the shape of my hair and the shape of my dog's ears are kind of the same. And, you know, it's just so crazy. And I, at the time, I never realized that my hairstyle was exactly like my dog. So now I'm a little bit more aware of the, the, uh, the copycatting. This I find to be the most amazing image. Is there any, oops. This image here is so powerful. So as we're looking at this, can you see something quite fascinating? So James, do you notice anything unusual about what uh, my lovely Rosemary and I are doing? Um, well, you have the same face on. Oops, we sure do. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. We have the same face on, yes. And do you, do you have any, any idea what, what caused that expression? Uh, I, I can't even take a guess. There's probably some type of problem that you're both working through <laughs> if I had to. Be... You're absolutely right. So 
I think the brilliant thing is that Rosemary, who works with me and has for 12 years, she's an amazing hairdresser. She's biting her lip. I am biting my lip out of sheer tension and frustration. And I'm literally biting my words because the model that we're working with is quite challenging. So what I'm going to show you here is this lovely journey. So here I am at the Vanderbilt mansion. I have the entire place to myself. This is a dream come true. Even though I'm not the princess, I get to play with this girl and transform her looks. We took her from a classic bride and we took her on this amazing journey to a bohemian bride. And when you're on location doing work like this, time is a challenge. Moving from location to location is, is interesting. Working with all of these different hairstyles, you've got to be quick and efficient. So this lovely model was the kind of girl that when you touched her hair with a brush, her head went with you. You touch her hair, her head goes with you. The moment I back home, she makes an expression. It's like, oh my goodness me, this is going to be a difficult one. So I'd say, please, could you keep your head still? Please, could you keep your head still? And then she made all these strange facial expressions. And I'm thinking, okay, so some of the hairstyles I was going to do, I'm going to have to do it differently because this girl is being very, very difficult. We went through the day and I just bit my lip, was professional and tried to humor her and be as good as I could possibly be to get through the day. And obviously we had a great shoot and these, all of these images and the, the tutorials for this ended up on Hair Designer TV. But what was amazing was that we did not realize that we were doing this. We did not realize we were manifesting this tension. So that begs to question the power of human behavior and how contagious it is. So what in your world right now is having a, where is your intention and where are the, where are the blind spots? So when you think about developing a great sense of style, which is what we're talking about tonight, how we're gonna actually attract the clients that we want with the power of intention and the power of attraction, because we're looking at how we're branding ourselves, putting ourselves together to attract that type of client who values what we're doing. We're unified as a team. We are understanding the power of how we communicate and how we are non-verbally communicating. And I think Einstein says it the best, everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the energy of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It could be no other way. This is not a philosophy, this is physics. So when you understand energy, and of course today we certainly understand energy with the crisis that we're in, energy, we can't see it, but it is powerful. And therefore, when you put intention around your brand and the law of attraction, you start to attract the kind of people you want in your chair. And I really believe when you get the people you want in your chair, you have joy. You have so much fun because you're enjoying who is sitting in your chair. And when you take ownership of that, it's super, super powerful. So you cannot give what you do not have. So I was working with this really great hairdresser, very experienced. And I said to him, you need to work on the half round brush and you need to be able to do nice smooth bobs. And he said, well, Viv, I usually use a round brush and I tend to do this sort of sexy type of hair. And I said, well, that's fantastic. I love both sides of the spectrum, but you should learn how to do a half round brush because one day the client will show up. He said, no, I don't have that type of client. I said, please do this expand your skill 30 years in the business expand your skill so that you will have more creativity and more fun and you won't burn out because you just said to me Viv I'm bored and I'm burnt out and all I'm asking you to do is change your brush right and try a different way of finishing the hair so he did he practiced and practiced and then one day I got a phone call and he said you know you said to me when you can do it she will show up I said that is true you can't give what you don't have, but when you take ownership and you have it and you develop the skills, she will show up. He said, well, she did show up. I went, okay, great. So tell me more. He said, well, she showed up, but you didn't tell me it would be the uh, editor in chief of American Vogue. Anna Winter is sitting in his chair and she wants a bob blow dry. She says to him very clearly, I would like a Denman brush blow dry. I do not want my hair flat ironed and 
I do not want any product in my hair. I think I would have freaked out to be perfectly honest if Anna Winter was sitting in my chair, but it's the law of attraction. When you have it and you work on it, they come in and that's what's really extraordinary. So the home play here, this is your second home play and I, I hope you're taking some screen captures as we go through here. How does the law of attraction play out in your salon? What would be wonderful in this quiet time would be to do a makeover. So obviously we can't do a formal photo shoot right now, but everyone is good at selfies. Now's a great time to work on your new look. What is that going to be? A new headshot. Also in this time, work together on designing your seasonal mood boards and start thinking about some hot trends and what you want to attract. Create an avatar of your ideal client that you want to attract to you. And I have seen this work a thousand times. I have people come to my workshop and do a little haircut, photograph it, photograph it well, put it on Facebook. While they're here with me in the workshop, they're getting inquiries like, when, when are you coming back? I just saw you posted something on Facebook. I want that hairstyle, it's so amazing. So that's the power of when you do get it right. So I'm just gonna come out of screen share for a second and see how people are responding to this. So James, do we have any questions or any comments? Um, you know, everybody is uh, going, you know, anytime you talk about Instagram or Facebook, of course, everyone's a little bit worried that theirs isn't good enough. Um, I know you had mentioned that it's a good time, even with selfies, if you can't see clients now or can't go back to old work, um, it's definitely a good time. Um, Linda had asked where you get your inspiration from. So who's on your seasonal mood board for the upcoming summer? Well, um, actually, I, I'm always looking for an idea. And I have a team of people around me that feed me things because I can't always be out there morning, noon and night looking for images. So I have that part where I stay current and relevant. The other part is I allow myself some time to just experiment and create. And um, when I'm working on a photo shoot or working on anything new, a collection, I will work on a mannequin head. I'm gonna bring a mannequin over here for a second. She's got a body. She's got my moo cow dress on. So I was just playing around the other day and I was, I, I'm coming out with a new collection called the Ponytail Story. So I don't know whether you can see you can see that. Can you see it close? Looks good. Yeah. So, so I was just playing around with sewing hair and playing around with different ideas. So this was just me allowing myself 20 minutes to just play. And you know, you've got to block out some time for that because that playtime is what feeds you. And I, I think it's very important to know what does feed you. So inspiration is everywhere. And um, I, I don't always look inside the industry. I look outside of the industry. And I would have to say, what I'm gonna be sharing with you on Thursday has been the biggest game changer in my career. And that's what we're working towards right now in our conversation. They're asking where you get your life-size mannequins from. <laughs> She's a dressmaker's form. And I chopped off her head, right? And then I got a pivot point stand and I made a big hole and I stuck the stand in there. And they know that, that, fib that fiber stuff that fills around pipes, it like insulates? I used that to insulate her. It was hysterical. I'm sawing her head. <laughs> well, <laughs> listen, it, it's actually, it's actually nice because you can use it to start your, your spring and, and summer thinking, and then you can save it for Halloween in the fall and you could use it at your house. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Liv, Liv, I, I gotta ask you one thing. Just with your accent, just say, like the White Queen, off with her head. Off with her head. <laughs> off. <laughs> you know, something also that's wonderful to be able to do is for example, taking a mannequin head and showing foiling sections on one side that are working, say, vertical, another side working horizontal, uh, another area of the head, like dividing the head into quadrants so that the client can actually see what baby lights look like or what an ombre looks like. And all you need to do is take the head divided up into quarters so that the client can actually see it. Because there's one thing looking at a photograph, and for any of you who photographed 
colored hairstyles, it never reads as it really, really is. It's always a challenge to photograph color. And I think there's something special about that. So you can get your team being creative around some mannequin heads right now and do some fun things to bring back to the salon so you can show your clients, okay, this half of the head is razor cut. This half of the hair cut is scissor cut. So that when I'm trying to educate my client on what the razor does and what the scissors do, she can actually touch it. And I think that that's really fun because anytime someone brings in this with an image on it, it's great. But the problem is that is not who's sitting in your chair. And as much as I like a photo reference for an inspiration, she's not here. And I, as the expert, need to design to who she is and therefore take control of the situation. And I think that's where the power is when you have an incredible five-star consultation because that's where the value is in our business. Hey, Vivian, two, two good questions came in that sort of play into that. I know you talked about coming up with the avatar for who your best client would be, um, but they're asking on the Facebook group how you feel about a dress code and so on and how that actually would apply to you. I, I'm assuming look the way you want to look so that you can attract the clients you want to attract. And then Bella had asked a really good question. What do you do when you're in a funk and you're trying to get inspiration um, because I feel like everybody's finally coming out of the funk from this COVID-19 and I, I have a feeling next week is going to be a whole new day. Yes, um, absolutely. Um, so uh, the first thing about dress code, dress code is born because some members of the staff just don't dress to a certain professional standard and it doesn't match the brand. You can train people around style and branding so that when you show up for work, you look like an amazing professional with a great sense of style. Now, if you have a dress code of black, you can still accessorize. You can still do some very, very cool things, even with a black. So, you know, it, it, you know, if you're in a proper uniform, then obviously you can't. Your hair is your only expression of your creativity. When I joined Trevor Sorby, um, his biggest thing was no one in the salon could wear long hair. He said, I don't want you wearing long hair. I sell haircuts. What are you doing wearing long hair? You all got to have a haircut. And we all had to wear haircuts that were short because that's what we sold. And he was really, and the other thing he was really tough on is if you don't look good, I don't want you in my salon. So he attract, he, he hired good looking people. They had to have amazing haircuts. And we were expected to be stylish and we were because it was all it was just a big fashion parade i would lay out my clothes at night the night before going out with all of my different outfits and select and i when i was at sassoon's i'd be dressed up from head to toe in hats and all this stuff it was a performance because we were all trying to outperform each other you know and and that's the way it was so it's about education you know, if you only look here, that, that's all you're seeing. When I look at someone, I'm looking head to toe. I learn more from stepping back and looking at them head to toe in the mirror than I will ever hear. I'm blind because they're caped. So to me, it's, it's an education. The other question about when you're in a funk, I relate to that. Are you burnt out? Um, are you physically well? Because sometimes when you're exhausted, you get into a funk. Sometimes when you're doing too much of one thing, you get into a funk. Uh, if you're not fit, if you're not eating well, you get into a funk. So you have to look at those things first of all and reset some goals. Because when you reset some goals, which we're gonna actually explore tonight, you've got to find your why. Now I've been in situations where I've made a ton of money and been bored because I was making all this money and I had to do what somebody else told me to do. And I felt like I sold my soul. And I've been in situations where I've been so creative and the money hasn't even come in. And I've worked for free for fashion shows. I've worked for free for photo shoots and I've been thriving, but I haven't got any money. So it's a juggling act always to balance the financial and the what feeds your heart. But I promise you, when you do what feeds your heart, you're, you're self-motivated, you're self-excited because you have a burning desire. No one can put desire in your heart. 
You have to find your desire. You have to find your passion. You have to find your purpose. And you need to be around people that support that, that lift that up. And if you're around people that don't, you need to love, you need to socially distance. That's, that's great. <laughs> You know, it's funny is I, my, I'm, uh, I'm famous for more than one unpopular opinion sometimes and kind of challenging stylists because I don't do hair myself. I just do the numbers and the marketing side. But um, somebody, you know, in, in playing to that, I'm a big proponent of working less and charging more. So I know everyone's so worried about getting back into the salon and, you know, and, and how clients will feel and how the correcting color and all these things. But my thing is that it's about time that they learn that stylists are a profession and you guys should be treated like experts and i just say raise your prices and work less so you can spend some time in a mannequin head and get some inspiration but like i said i agree with you james 100 percent, 100 percent. can you say that one more time i want that first sound bite vivian i agree with you james 100 percent. i'm gonna play that for my wife she's on the facebook live group i'm just gonna keep playing that over and over all day tomorrow the three laws of compensation, let's explore those. So when we're looking at three, comp this, this is what drives me, skill. You are compensated for the level of skill that you have. When you can do something that nobody else in your town can do, whether it be a five-star consultation, the way you read that person, that is a skill. When you look at what's in demand, are you doing exactly the same as everybody else so you have no point of difference anymore? What are you doing that's trending, but you add your spin to it? The cost to replace you. This is my guide. Viv, what are your skills? Improve, practice, improve, do something different. Okay, so now Viv's a baby colorist. She's gonna be starting her training with Beth Renardi. That's, and she's gonna start going out to all these amazing colorists so, to be trained. Great, demand. Well, we know there's a demand for that. The demand for what you do is so critical. The cost to replace you. Well, can anyone do this? So I have, a, I have a business, I have two businesses, but one of my businesses is Hair Designer TV. It's an online educational platform. It's been around for 16 years. It was around when there was dial up. Now everyone's out there, especially right now, everyone is on the platform of teaching and sharing. Some are brilliant and some should not be teaching because in most professions, you have to have a qualification to teach so that you're an authority that can be trusted and you're not going to get someone into harm's way. We know right now everyone's out there teaching, which is great, but be careful who you learn from. So I have to kind of take my membership based website to another level and another level so that it is something you can't find anywhere else. And so I am being pushed by the sea of sameness to strive for something different. How does that play out for you? How are you coaching your team? What are you saying to yourself? Because right now is the best time, obviously, to invest in yourself and see a huge return. So this is our third home play here. The question here is you must either magnify, modify your dreams or magnify your skills. And I think that is huge. A lot of people right now a soul searching. You must either modify your dreams, don't expect so much from life, or magnify your skills by Jim Rohn. I know that the people I've met in my life who are the happiest are those who've been able to feed their heart and feed their pocket. Trevor Sorby always used to say to me, Viv, just do it right, just do it the very best, and the people will come. Don't focus on the money, focus on the job. Do it brilliantly and more jobs like that will come. You wanna get out into the editorial world, do amazing editorial, do everything you can and the jobs will start to come. Viv, I want you to practice this on a mannequin head and I don't care how long it takes, I don't care if you don't sleep, practice it until you're brilliant and the job will come. He set such a high standard and such a high expectation for which I will always be very grateful. So these are things that you can start to set some goals around. The three laws of compensation. Because as you know, if you don't like the number, then change the behavior. That's the bottom line, isn't it? And start making your list. So as you go back into planning and looking at your reinvention, the reinvention of your brand, the, the awareness and the intention around the law of attraction, who you're attracting and who you really feel that you should be marketing to, the three laws of compensation, 
How does the education fit into this? And how can you make it fun? And how can you make it engaging? And how can you trust that the education is going to produce something quite extraordinary? So let's go back again to hear from our friends and um, James. So any feedback? Um, lots of feed. I mean, obviously a lot of love. I, I have a feeling everybody is taking very detailed notes at this time for what you're saying. Um, but it's it's true. Everything really makes a lot of sense. I mean, Tina's saying I could listen to Vivian for days and Belleth says that you're brilliant, which we all knew. Who can't wait to see you at the next show you're going to be at. So I think a lot of love and a lot of people burning their pencils down, writing uh, some ideas. So hopefully everybody takes these ideas and comes back when you're on on Thursday. Yes. Um, but I think you might get hammered with questions, which is great. Oh, that's good. Derek, anything on your end? So, so what I'm seeing from a lot of a lot of people, and also from you, is, and I'll use my words: do the why, and the rest will come. Right? So, you're, I mean, it, it's pretty, pretty amazing. And the better coaches that have been in this group for, for the time, they're all good. But some of them have expressed that as their motto, right? And and you seem to be saying the same thing. Basically, find your why, and the rest will come. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, it's so true. Okay, so now we're going to go back. I'm going to, am I screen sharing still? I don't think I am. Um, no, it's just you, Vivian. Okay, so we're going to go back and screen share. So I put together a survival package, which I'll have to present to you on Thursday. We've been working on it tenaciously and it's to try and help you now while you have your kids uh, at home uh, and how to get productive right now so that this time as we're going by is not wasted. So I will share more about the survival package when we come back on Thursday for you. But I want you to know that I'm trying to do something really special to help you on your way. The four emotional drivers that determine your destiny. I wish that baby Viv had known this a long time ago. Have you ever gone up to somebody, a client, and been intimidated by them? They're either a celebrity or they have an air about them that can be intimidating. Have you ever experienced really intimidating hair? It's like, oh my gosh, there's so much. Oh, there's so little. Have you ever been frustrated by a client? <laughs> Frustrated with the hair, you try and put it up, it falls down. You try and soften the edge and it still is prickly and nasty. Um, you cut the fringe and it does something different to what you expected. The hairline should have laid flat and now it's sticking up. You thought she'd go to a pretty blonde and she's now brassy and yellow. Blah, blah, blah. We've all been there, haven't we? When we meet someone, it is a choice to be intimidated and it is a choice to be frustrated. And circumstances can make us feel that way, but how we respond to it is within our power. What I do know is that when I've been intimidated by a celebrity or frustrated with myself, it's like, oh, I can't believe you're, you're being like this right now. It's very easy to get uninspired and it's really easy to get unmotivated, really easy. So if you're not attracting the people that you want to sit in your chair, you're going to be intimidated and frustrated, which is going to be no surprise that you're uninspired. And it's going to be no surprise that you're unmotivated. No surprise at all. But when you understand how the law of attraction works and when you understand how to build the brand and how to present yourself in a way that will attract the likeness, it's super, super powerful. So when you look at this lovely lady here, Actually, I just want to go back for a second. When you look at Tiffany, who's the salon aggressive, and Sweet Timon, who's sweet and neutral, and then we have Trey, salon ego, each of these wonderful three personalities, I would say would be atypical of any salon. And each of them would handle intimidation, frustration differently. And each of them would close down differently according to their personality. And they would be the sort of people where, oh my gosh, they're so unmotivated. I can't get them to show up for a class, blah, 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 blah. We've all been there. My mantra is that I'm responsible to be inspired and look for inspiration. It's my responsibility to be motivated and I need to be balanced in my lifestyle to be motivated. And when intimidation comes my way, which it will, 
And when frustration comes my way, which it will, my inspiration, my motivation, and of course my knowledge is the thing that helps me through those tricky times. So this lovely lady, when she was with me, with this kinky, frizzy texture, and we were going to take her smooth and sleek, it was, first of all, it's like, ooh, I don't know how this is gonna work. I mean, this is really quite different, you know, what she, where she is and where we're going to take her. So it would have been very easy to have been intimidated by this hair texture, frustrated by it, uninspired and certainly unmotivated. But instead it was like, you know, I think one of the genius things about being a hairdresser is the ability to observe. And highly creative people have this wonderful ability to observe things. And I know Nicholas French uh, is on the call. What a genius this man is. His ability to observe and see and translate it into something amazing is a gift. But to observe, you need to take time. You need to stop. You need to look. It needs to marinate through. And I know that when we're behind our chair, whether it's in the salon, on a photo shoot, on a fashion runway show, life moves at an incredibly fast pace. But when we're not in that space, that's when we should be practicing. I mean, I have so many mannequin heads here, it's crazy. I've got a village here. Um, and I'm always practicing and always working on new ideas. So it's my responsibility to show up inspired, motivated, and that cancels out the intimidation and the frustration. So I want you to think about how you show up and what you do when somebody is intimidating for you and how you navigate through that. Because the only way I know to get through it is knowledge. When you have knowledge and you have such strong classic training, it will withstand the passage of time. And on that classic training, people can throw you all these different curved balls. The hair can be all sorts of challenges and you can rise above it. And this is where your value is in our business. The other thing that I know, and, I, and that's why I always like to have a good old laugh and have fun, is that happy people are three times more creative, 37% increase in productivity and sales, and live 10 years longer. This is a wonderful book by Sonia, and I can't even pronounce her last name, the How of Happiness. It's, a, it's an amazing book. I highly recommend you get the audio book and listen to it because it's so powerful. So in your culture of the branding, the law of attraction, the law of compensation, and the four emotional drivers, where does the happiness sit? I have to confess, when I was at Sassoon's, happiness, <laughs> it, it was tough. It was so tough at Sassoon's. And I used to go home crying, going, Mom, I, you know, I did another terrible hairstyle today and it went too short and the client cried and I cried and it was tough. Trevor was tough. He wasn't an easy guy to work for. A genius, a brilliant man, but tough because he had high standards. Now I put so much intention around the happy factor because I can be more creative when I'm happy. So the education has to be fun. I have to have the fun factor there. And it just releases something else. So I want to ask you as we go through here, where is your happy factor? So when I am looking at rebranding myself and I'm setting any goals, I have my what, my wow, why, my how, and my what if. These are really important things that I use for coaching. So my what is, so if I'm here, where do I want to go? So let's just take an example of, I don't know, a photo shoot. So you want to do a photo shoot to promote a new collection. So that's the what. So we look at the current images that you have and you look at where you want to go. And hopefully it's a big jump. The next question is, well, why do a photo shoot? So we're naming the, the goal, a photo shoot, but why pursue the goal? Well, what's it going to do? What is the brand? What's the leverage of this? How is it going to, how are you going to have a return on that investment? What is it going to do for the team, et cetera, et cetera. But behind that why, I think something more important to ask is why would you quit? Because it's one thing to have a goal, but you must know why you would not continue with the goal. The how. How will I achieve the goal? Okay, so I've got to build an art team. I've got to build my photographic team. I've got to cast models. How am I going to do that? Am I going to hire somebody who's a producer that does this? 
Am I going to put a notice in my staff room and saying, I'm looking for photographer, makeup artist, model, blah, 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 blah. If anyone knows anybody or you are one, let us know, blah, 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 blah. You know, be creative around it because you can always do tests. The what if. What if you do achieve the goal? How would you feel? Wow, I did this photo shoot. It's amazing. And it brought me in some new business. La, la, la. The team are excited. La, 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 la. What if you do not achieve the goal? How will you feel? How will you feel to be right where you are right now doing nothing? So this is the most powerful thing to do right now in your business, in your life. I always say, design your lifestyle first and reverse your career into it. If there was a time to do post-it notes of every idea that you have and put post-it notes on the wall as to, I want to achieve this, this, and this, and this, and this, and you look at all the post-it notes and think, okay, this is my big picture, but now what's real and how do I reverse this into this career? This is the time to do it because this is part of your makeover that we're speaking about. I love this quote. We overestimate what we can achieve in a year and we underestimate what we can achieve in a lifetime. So many people quit because it hasn't happened quick enough not realizing that some things you can't microwave, some things just have to marinate. When I interviewed Vidal Sassoon for the film, I'm Not Just a Hairdresser, I asked him about what was it like to go from shampoos and sets with the big rollers to the geometric haircuts. And he looked at me with his beautiful eyes and that lovely, soft, sexy voice. He said, well, Viv, it wasn't easy. And I said, well, how long did it take, Vidal, to go from that to that? He said, it took nine years. Nine years? And I'm thinking, today people quit so quickly. And I said, well, why did it take so long? He said, after we did our days in the salon, we were in the salon in the evening, working on models, working on new ideas, practicing, working on the techniques. And he said, we had to move people from this mindset of shampoos and sets coming in as standing appointments to understanding that they were going to have their hair cut off, flat and skinny, blow dried. They'd be coming back every four to six weeks. He said, it took nine years. I said, what would you have done if you hadn't been successful? He said, I was prepared to quit. He said, because I couldn't bear doing the same old anymore and I wanted to do something new. And that for me was such a powerful thing when he said that. So I have in my possession uh, an hour and 45 minutes of Vidal Sassoon's stories that no one has even seen. <laughs> because I made the film, I'm not just a hairdresser and I took pieces of it and put it into this film. So one day I will go back into this footage and share it with you guys because we all need to hear messages like that to understand that we overestimate what we can achieve in a year, but we underestimate what we can achieve in a lifetime. And that's a sober reminder. I always say be brave enough to be, to, to be bad at something new, but just do it on the mannequin head. People come to me and say, oh, well, I'm not very good with the razor or I can't do dress work. It's like, well, great, then I'm gonna help you. Yeah, but I'm not very good at it. Fine, it's totally cool. I will make you good, right? So we, th we think we have to show up being brilliant where no, that's not how it is. But what I do say is practice until you cannot improve and that, is very, very powerful. And working on a mannequin head is where you kind of find out what works and what doesn't work. You don't want to be doing that on a client. What I do know is that fear is the greatest barrier to creativity, uh, which, which is, it absolutely kills the creative process. It kills possibility thinking. It kills opportunity. So when fear comes up for me, I have to either say to myself, well, just do it afraid. Just go for it. I think that's called courage. Or well, what's the worst thing that could happen, right? Um, and I do things really scared. I was fearful tonight to come on and present because you know it's not easy to present to an audience that you can't see. <laughs> I feel like I'm, you know, it's really weird to be honest. Um, but you, you do it anyway, right? Because you have to stay with the end in mind. So when fear shows up for me, in a way it's saying it's gonna fail because you don't fear good things happening. So when I'm frightened about it, I get out the mannequin head and I start practicing. And if I'm not quick enough, I'll start practicing. I, on one uh, 
collection that I worked on uh, for Fashion Week in New York uh, was, was doing French twists, which are not an easy hairstyle to do. I got my crew together. I said, listen, make sure you can know how to do a French twist. Watch this video, French twist, French twist. They said, yeah, yeah, we can do it. As we started to get into it, it was clear that these hairdressers couldn't do a French twist. In two hours, I did 19 French twists. I don't know how, but I did. On another fashion show, we had to do faux bobs with waves, take, take long hair, put it into a faux bob. It was this lovely 1920s kind of vibe. I, we had 60 models and we had three hours. I had 25 hairdressers and I ended up doing, I think it was about 18 faux bobs. And I'm doing the faux bobs just as they're about to step onto the stage. Fear? You bet there's fear, because what if I can't do it? This is a major designer and the hair has to be right for a fashion show. It's going to be published everywhere. But you don't let it stop you because knowledge will override it all. And I think that's a really important message. So Hair Designer TV is my website. I have over 900 videos that live here. And it's been an incredible journey to learn about the whole world of the digital environment. I've created hair cutting libraries, short, medium, and long. I've created editorial libraries, everything from special events, red carpet, bridal, hair color library. And so as I'm going through here tonight, what I'm sharing with you, this content lives in who is sitting in your chair. So if you want to dive deeply into the subject and after I share with you on Thursday, the meat of this content, I think you're going to really enjoy who is sitting in your chair. One Girl Seven Looks is a journey from long hair to short hair. And it's a journey with one mannequin head and it's a fast track to take you through seven salon friendly haircuts and go from the longest hairstyle to the shortest hairstyle. The designer program is like your PhD of hairdressing, it's mastery. And it takes you on a journey from dress work right the way through to hair cutting to really be a true designer. The salon training program has leadership models in there and it's about how you develop your own training program and system. I'm coming out uh, next week with a ponytail collection, which is really cool. It's like 40 videos all in the ponytail. So there's a lot of co content there. So tonight I'm gonna leave you with this, your home play, standing still is moving backwards. I want you to use this template. So take a photograph of the screen, the what, the why, the how, and the what if. And the big thing here is, why would you quit? How would you feel if you don't achieve that goal? And where in your world right now can you find and create with intention that happiness? So tonight, what we have spoken about is everything to lead to the icing on the cake, which is the consultation itself. Because if you don't understand the power of intention of attracting the clients that you want and building your brand around the avatar and the photography that you're doing through Instagram, you don't understand the power of the law of attraction and getting so intentional about it. I promise you, if you really like rocked out bohemian in a real big way that you never have before, when you go back to your salon, all of a sudden more bohemian clients are going to come to you. If you say, right, I'm going for this total classic look. When you go back to the salon, all of a sudden classic people will be coming to you. When you put intention behind it, it is so powerful. And you start to get the kind of people that you want in your space. Therefore, you are less intimidated and less frustrated and you are motivated and inspired because we thrive on creativity and we thrive in happiness. And we've got so consumed by the demands and the, the nightmare of business as it can be, that it takes us away from the essence as to why we became a hairdresser, to be artists, to be commercial artists, to be creative. I'm gonna show you through my consultation on Thursday, how you can save time, you can guarantee a really good end result, and the people who've been through my program tell me things like, I have tripled my income, Viv. I've fallen back in love with hair again. I'm attracting a totally different client to me than ever before. Clients who were stuck are now excited about something new. No one ever talked to me about my face shape and how to design to my hair and my body type. I'm going to take you on that journey on Thursday. 
Tonight was the foundation for that to work. And that is critical to understand. So I'm going to now just open up to um, any questions before we say goodnight. I know yes. we started late, but I don't want to be taking up someone's time too much. Oh, I, got, I have a few for you, Vivian. Um, the first one, Candace wants to know, what was the most meaningful moment in, in your industry career? Um, Tough one, right? Tough one out of the gate. <laughs> I, 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 I'm very fortunate because I've had so many working with so many iconic hairdressers that every time I've worked with an iconic hairdresser and watched their hands move in a magical way, I've been blown away. Um, so, you know, when you think pre Instagram and YouTube where everyone was on film, I watched things happen that no one else saw and they are in my brain. And when I see photography of Trevor Sorby's work, I was there for those major collections and there's no video telling you how it was done. That is pretty impressive. But I would say probably Head Designer TV has been the most significant thing. It's been the hardest thing. I've cried a lot. I've lost a lot of money. Um, I've made money and I've been through every pain you can possibly imagine in, in pioneering a business. Love it. So, th so the next question is, how do you handle pushback from employees? No, why? Why is there pushback? I think that's important because, you know, when you attract a likeness of energy around you and you have to be in what you want to have. So when you get pushback, the question is the why? Because is, is there something valuable? Like whenever I've had pushback from people, it's like, well, why? And they say, well, Viv, you're going too fast. We can't keep up with you. Oh, well, what would your solution be to that? Viv, let's just stay on one project and let's do 30 and expect them all to be done like yesterday. Okay, so let's make a plan and please help me with being less spontaneous. Viv, we're gonna give you a board. And on that board, you can put every idea, but we're not moving to the next idea until it, the first one's finished. Okay, that's a good reason to have pushback. So the next one I have for you, and I know you're gonna answer this on Thursday is, where do you get inspiration from when you're burned out? And I know you're going to do this through the consultation process, but if you want to give us a little teaser, great. Yes, but because in my consult, my consultation I'm going to share with you on Thursday actually comes from the world of fashion. When I've worked with fashion designers and they give me the brief of the collection and they describe the look and the feeling of the, the person and, and they give me a title to the collection, I have to go off and come up with ideas to, to present to the designer. So whether it's a, a, a photo shoot or whether it's a, a fashion collection, it's understanding the big picture. And so what I've been able to do is take what I do there in creating a story and bring it into the salon because every woman who sits in her chair has a story. And if you don't know her story and know how to design and interpret to her story, then you're missing. She's just a nine o'clock appointment with a trim. She's a nine o'clock appointment with balayage. You're not connecting to her, her story. And she's photographing herself, which then immortalizes her story. And she puts that out onto her Facebook and her friends either like it or they don't like it. She attracts a man, she doesn't attract a man, blah, 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 blah. She has a story. So we now live in the photographic world. Our hairstyles are photo journaled by clients doing selfies. And some things may look good when you look at them in person and they don't photograph very well at all. Consequently, the head is down, we do the back, whatever, right? So when you connect to the story, the inspiration and the ideas are born there. And that's what I'm gonna share with you on Thursday. Love it. So the next one, have you ever made a mistake behind the chair that made you feel defeated? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Um, yes. Uh, the hair responding completely differently to how I expected, going shorter than I expected. Um, yes, yes, yes. And feeling awful. And, and, and you know what's even worse than that is when you know you've done a brilliant hairstyle and it, you've nailed it and the client hates it. And you're saying to yourself, it's a work of art. So what? It's on the wrong head. 
It doesn't fit her face. It doesn't fit her lifestyle. It doesn't fit her age. You learned it somewhere and you just stuck it on her. And it's like someone wearing a size four dress and they're a size 40 or whatever, you know. It's just the other way around. <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> so yeah, so the other one is the second half to that. How, how'd you overcome the situation? How'd you get your mind refocused? Um, I had, it's called the bathroom. I've had, I've had many pity parties in the bathroom. I've cried in the bathroom. Um, I remember uh, being ripped apart on a photo shoot by a photographer and it was a big shoot and I could not, I couldn't get it together. I didn't understand what they wanted and they, and they got to be pretty aggressive with me, like really angry. And I went to the bathroom and I just was sobbing. And while I was in there, there was a model who was also sobbing. So when I looked at her, I said, why are you crying? And she had just been to a Victoria's Secrets model casting and they told her she was fat, right? And she was skinny and she had a beautiful body. I mean, she wasn't wearing a whole lot. And so she's crying because she was told she was fat for a, <laughs> for a casting. I was crying because they told me my hair sucked. Yeah. Um, when that happens, right, it's okay. I understand that you're not liking it. What do I need to do for you to like this? What do I need to do to change this to make you happy? Please tell me more because obviously I'm not understanding. But that, that happens less when you have a phenomenal consultation because when you meet the client in the landscape where she lives, okay, I, used, I was trained so strong technically, so strong technically. There's not much in here I can't do. I may struggle to get there, but I'm pretty strong technically. But what about face shape? What about where she lives in fashion? What about the sensuality or the lack of sensuality of the woman? When you, I put technique in the forefront, I am not seeing who that woman or that man is. When I find out who they are and their personality and their lifestyle, I bring that to the forefront and the technique is the very last thing I do. So I have flipped my consultation around from back to front and now I'm having a success I never had before and those things we're speaking about, the client not liking it, the pushback, the, the mistakes, it's so rare. I had a person who I took through this consultation that I'm going to share on Thursday. I do the whole consultation and I say to her, I feel like your look is going to be Gwen Stefani meets Marilyn Monroe. We made her a blonde. We layered into her hair. We made her look very sexy and very young. Finish her hair and I see a tear rolling down her cheek. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh. I got this wrong. My consultation form never goes wrong. Never goes wrong. It's so good. And I'm thinking, how could my consultation form gone wrong? It's not me. It's my form. That went wrong, right? And then she does one of these, <laughs> like this. I thought, like, oh no, we're going to have a big crying thing going on here, right? It's like, and she gasps her breath. And I say, what's the matter? What's the matter? And she says, I'm so happy. I went, like, really? She said, yes. She said, you don't understand. I said, what? She said, I've never felt more beautiful. And I said, well, that's lovely. She said, but you still don't understand. And I said, why? She pulls up her sleeve, moves up her cape, pulls up her sleeve, and there on her arm is a full arm tattoo of Marilyn Monroe. And Great. I had no idea it was there. And I'm, she felt like Marilyn. That's powerful. That's what it's all about. That's what you live for, right? Yeah, so, and that's so where the money is, right? That's where I have is. A, Viv, I, I have a great one for you, and I've been dying to ask you this all night long. So what was one of the best pieces of advice you've received from one of your mentors, Vidal, Trevor, whoever it is? You tell me. Okay. <laughs> I'm working on a collection in America. I came to America for nine months to launched Trevor Sorby's product line. I came from London. I'm in this place and I'm working on this collection all by myself. I'm really homesick and I'm trying to be creative and trying to be creative and I'm trying and trying and it's really not working that well. Trevor flies in from London. He walks into the room and there is silence. He's looking at all these hairstyles that I've created that are going to go on tour with him. And the silence was terrifying. And he looks at me and he says, Vivian, there is a fine line between creativity and bad taste. And I was quiet. 
I went, yeah. Which one am I, Trevor? He said, bad taste. He said, your creativity has gone so far, you lost the beauty. He said, Vivian, doesn't matter how creative you are, we're in the beauty business. And when you compromise beauty for creativity and being clever, you failed and you have bad taste. I burst into tears. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, that was a bathroom moment. <laughs> But it was great, because I never forgot that, right? It was, he was right, tried too hard. Don't go too far. That was awesome, I appreciate that. Um, does anybody else have any questions for Vivian while we're on? Um, I think I got, let me just take a quick look. I had one more from Sharon on Facebook. I wanna say thanks to my pal, Jeff Jasky on Facebook. He's from Oramiris, he brings his crew on every night. They are humongous. Vivian McKender fans, just to let you know, he kept telling me he needs the link, he needs the link. So definitely thanks for bringing them in, Jeff. And hang on one second. There's just so many comments to go back. Um, what was your inspiration throughout your career to incorporate your fashion and editorial skills as a hairdresser? I love the total look. And Great taste completes who you are. It doesn't compete with who you are. So when you put a look together that works head to toe, um, it becomes the, the perfect picture. And I always want it to work that way. And I never want to chop somebody off on the head. So that has always been a driving force to understand because, you know, I, I made a movie, it's on hair design and TV called 100 Years of Hairdressing. And I have original footage from 1915. And it has these lovely little chubby ladies walking out of a barber shop, all with their hair cut off. Because at that time, there were not women's salons. And the only place that women could get their hair cut was in a barber shop. And they're all coming out with these short little hairstyles. And you look at, at retro and you look at fashion and we can look at things now and we can look at say at pictures of the eighties, think what were we thinking about? Why did someone create a lob? Why did people do that? And at the time, everyone thought, oh, that's so cool, that's so cool. So style is, is, is timeless, but fashion is fleeting. So it's important to understand fashion because we're in that wonderful world of fashion, but great style transcends beyond that. And, and I think that's what's always been a motivation for me. That's fantastic. Um, I want to remind everybody that's on, uh, Vivian will be back on Thursday. Derek will post up the links in the Salon Ops group. And make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, Salon Ops. Um, all these videos will be rebroadcast there as well. Um, Derek did a, been working, burning the midnight oil, doing uh, two computers at once. I, you know, I don't even know how you do it sometimes. But Andrew's there to champion them. That's it. I'm, I'm Andrew, behind. Andrew. Vivian, you were... You're magnificent as always. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, Andrew. And thank you for the opportunity. I hope tonight's adds some value. The, the biggest message I want to give to you is take these homework pieces that we have here and really start to think about how you can strategize around that. This is a team building exercise to go back to your why of why you became a hairdresser and being more creative. Invest in you so you have more to give to your clients. That's the most important time. And and by reinventing yourself right now, it may be changing your parting. It may be doing some simple things, but change is so exciting. And photograph it all. And on Thursday, the whole thing will make sense when I show you how I go through this whole process and you're gonna love it. And if you don't feel creative, I promise when we're done, you will. Vivian, do me a favor before we cut off, just pop up your last screen or your PowerPoint with all your connection. Um, web addresses and everything so people can follow you and get on your programs and all that great stuff oh well um i suppose you can just go to uh, just go to hair designer tv okay perfect but i will i will give you a proper link on thursday so that uh, because it'll be something special just for everyone beautiful. who's on who's part of here beautiful and anything you want me to share with the group i'll do that both Thank in the group and group files and on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Salon Ops, two words, S-A-L-O-N-O-P-S. 
Um, we need 300 of you to subscribe so we can customize the channel. And um, all the videos are in there. I really appreciate it. Vivian, loved the meeting tonight. Just loved it, adored it. And uh, I know it's different for you, right? Talking to a computer than talking to a live group, but just knocked it out of the park. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Have a good night and be Thank safe you. and take care. And lots of love to you all. Thank you. Nice. Thank Thanks, you. Vivian. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.